I've been a creator in the real estate sector since 2008, and today I'm gonna to give you my biggest tips and tricks on prepping your property to look its absolute best on the open market. You'll not find another free guide online that encompasses as much practical information about staging as I'm gonna give you. All the advice I'll be covering today is focused on staging and prepping for photography, 360 tours, and video services to ensure that you get the highest quality imagery and hopefully in the process getting the highest possible sale price. It does not matter if you're a creator, an agent, an owner, or a stager. I'm gonna spell out everything in the process, including why. Because answering why I'm making these decisions is the most important aspect to learn if you wanna be able to recreate these results again and again for any property. Now there's a huge difference between prepping a property for imagery versus real life showings. By the end of this video, you'll be able to answer that same question, why? What's the deal, everyone? Welcome to Learning On Site. I'm Jeremy Deal, and if you're new here, I talk about being a full-time creative with a focus on running a real estate visuals marketing company and the gear it takes to do that. I wanna give a big shout out to Kula, our sponsor for today's video, but more on their really Kula services later on. I'll be switching up between on-site examples and walkthroughs like this one and deeper dives here in the studio throughout this entire video. And the first thing I wanna talk about are gonna be a few property generalizations or things that relate to the entire property and not just specific rooms. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'll get into those, but not just yet. And if you need it, there's gonna be a written breakdown of everything I'll talk about in today's video on my website. And I'll put a direct link to that in the descriptions as well. You can either use it for your knowledge or pass it along to your homeowners as is. So they know how to prepare for their upcoming shoots. Everything will be marked up down below if you're looking for help in one particular area, but I highly recommend watching it all for the extras I'm gonna sprinkle in along the way. Since we're starting at the beginning, let me tell you why staging for the two is so different from one another. When a photographer, videographer, or 360 tour creator shoots your property, generally speaking, they'll be shooting as what's called child's height or a much lower point of view than you typically see your space while walking around. This is one of the tricks we use to make spaces seem larger in imagery, but it also serves the purpose of giving the viewer an equal amount of ceiling to floor ratio. Shoot too high at like typical eye light, then you'll get a whole lot of ceiling or skewed verticals from looking down. Shoot that same image a little bit lower and suddenly it looks like a totally different room. There's obviously exceptions to this rule and I'll bring those up later, but generally speaking, that is the biggest reason why staging for the two different viewing experiences is so different. Now that you have that knowledge of one reason why, let's see if you can collect the rest. Starting with the inside of your house, let's talk blinds because to this day, it's still the question I get asked the absolute most about from agents and homeowners who are starting the preparation process. Generally speaking, I like all the blinds in the house to be down and tilted up roughly 20 degrees with the available light from the exterior shining up to the ceiling and not facing down towards the ground. Angling the blades of your blinds down can create massive hot spots or shine or glare on your floors, and it will also tint the color of your room to the color of those floors. If the light bounces off your beige carpet or yellow hardwoods, it will never look as clean and cohesive as it does when the light reflecting off of that pure white ceiling. Now keep in mind, there's not a single answer to this question since every property is so unique, but it does not matter if we're talking about photos, videos, 360 tours, the house will look more cohesive and provide a cleaner exterior image if all the blinds in the property are facing the same direction entirely. That means every room. If your property has some amazing views from the windows, obviously open up those blinds and showcasing them. And that's basically the only exception to the blind rules for me personally. One last thing on this topic, having crystal clean windows is not as important as most homeowners think it is. Unless you have those huge windows with amazing views, focus all that window scrubbing time on other aspects of preparation and it will be served much better. Next, I'm gonna jump into a few general guidelines of furniture placement, but I first wanna to touch base on the absolute worst thing you can have in your house, clutter. Clutter is the killer of good imagery and good vibes. Don't get me wrong, you can have a lot of things in your house and it's not cluttered. If it has a designated space that it lives on your bookshelf, counter, or tabletop, that's fine. But do yourself a favor, remove everything that does not belong or does not look visually appealing. Sorry for that small tangent, but trust me, 
Clearing clutter is extremely important. Now, let's get back to talking about furniture, I guess. I'm only going to give you exact layouts for a few scenarios. And what I'm going to do instead is teach you why. Why the furniture placement for in-person showings and content creation are so much different from one another. The first thing you must realize is that staging for in-person showings, the goal is to make the space feel comfortable and easy to navigate. You place couches and chairs in ways that lead to natural walking paths around the property, but for photos, that is completely irrelevant. What matters most for MLS listing images is the size of the space and the connectivity of those rooms. Let's start with a larger room, like a living room. You might be tempted to place the furniture closer together in the center to create a comfier and more inviting space, especially in those living rooms attached to like the 5,000 square foot plus houses, since they tend to be much larger rooms to begin with. You would be 100% correct to stage it like that if people were visiting your property in person or if you're living in that space. But when we're talking about imagery and when you arrange a space like that for photos, you end up looking at the backs of furniture for every angle or cropping off the room to move into that furniture space and show off that comfortable living space. Instead, push the furniture out to the walls, make the space look larger and remove the backs of furniture from your shot. If you didn't notice, I just mentioned that twice in a row, and that's because it's one of my extra tips. In imagery, the backside of chairs and sofas are straight up uninviting. The sides and fronts invite you to step into the image. The backs of these pieces make viewers feel off-put and stationary in the image. And now that you have this wide open space, it seems like a perfect time to tell you about today's sponsor, Kula, the most popular virtual tour software to create 3D, 360 tours for real estate, architecture, construction, and honestly, just about any other 360 services you can imagine. If you've been around this channel for a while, you already know how much I've shouted out this company in the past. Not because it pays me, but because it truly is my preferential tour builder and my company's professional workflow. With a built-in editor that is extremely simple to use, yet packed with a lot of powerful features to take your images straight from the camera to the web with no extra software required. It has the smoothest and most efficient 3D, 360 virtual tour player on the web, and that ensures your clients get the smoothest viewing experience. All the tours are super easy to share, embed, and add to listings. Plus, they link up with Aria, which is a huge win for those of you in that delivery system like myself. The tours are designed to work perfectly on mobile viewing since that's where 50% of all traffic comes from. And thanks to Kula Web XR support, you can now see all of your listings through a pair of VR goggles for the most immersive viewing experience possible. Kula is the sponsor for this video, but they are also the tour provider service I have personally used since 2019, and I honestly could not recommend them more for your professional 360 tour deliveries. Now that we're back, let's take all that knowledge you've gotten so far and move into the room that's hardest to apply it in, the dining room. This is gonna be the room where looking at the backs of chairs is almost guaranteed, but there are a few tips and workarounds I can give you here. Number one, if there's a bench, make sure you place that to the open side of the room. This will ensure that the space looks the largest from the most photographic angle. Also keep note to make sure that the table you place in the room is actually centered with the light of the room. It doesn't sound like it, but it makes a huge difference in imagery. If you have more a traditional dining room with all chairs and no bench, then you have no choice but to look at the back of those chairs. But make sure you put those ones with the best looking backs where I suggested placing the bench before. That way, at least when you're looking at the backs, they're pretty backs. The next room we're moving into is the kitchen because the very first point I wanna make applies to both the kitchen island and the dining room table I just finished talking about. No tall objects. For some reason, I've noticed that the desire to stage the kitchen island with a tall vase filled with flowers this is a horrible idea because all you accomplish is blocking the amazing view your rooms might have with flowers and those don't actually come with the property. You wanna add some color and texture to these spaces instead, downed items that are low and wide. Bowl of fruit, small succulent setting. If it sits over two foot tall, then it's too high and it will block important views from every angle of your kitchen whether it be hiding the dual ovens from the sitting side shot or blocking the view out of the windows from the cooking side. 
You can place taller items around the countertops as long as they live under the cabinets. KitchenAid mixers, knife blocks, and vases of flowers can all be placed along these outskirts of the kitchen, but again, never on the island or peninsula to block those views. Shine up the front of your fridge to be spotless and remove all of your personal objects like magnets and schedules. A nice teapot or tea set are perfect because they typically convey elegance while also keeping a very small footprint and you can never go wrong with a cute cookbook stage in the corner. But please, if you wanna feel authentic, please stop using the Magnolia table cookbook that no one actually cooks from and go get an old well-used one that matches your color scheme. Make sure you have your under cabinet lights on and working. And if you have a pot filler by the oven, stage that with a nice piece of cookware to showcase it's there for viewers, even at a quick glance. Lastly, do yourself a favor and hide everything that reminds people of cleaning. As a matter of fact, make this another tip that goes property wide. Hide everything that reminds people of cleaning the house until after they bought it. This means kitchen towels, paper towels, dish soap, drying racks, vacuums, brooms, mops, the list goes on and on. For some reason, real estate agents tend to hate Kleenex boxes, so hide those too. The last large interior space we're gonna have to cover before moving to all the little extras is the primary suite. And the first thing we're gonna touch on is the bed, since it is the largest piece in the room. Generally speaking, most creators will always get a view looking towards the windows to make the space feel larger, and they will typically start from the entrance to the bedroom because this gives the most natural first impression of the room. That being said, you want the bed on the opposite side of the room than the main entrance for that room. The reason is pretty simple when you think about it. You want as much open floor space between the bed and the camera as possible because this will make your room feel the largest in all imagery. If your bed is placed on the same side as the main entrance, they now must shoot over the top of the bed and that's going to make the room feel extremely small. Now keep in mind, this actually applies to all the secondary and tertiary bedrooms as well. Always put the bed on the opposite side of the main entrance to make the room feel bigger. I know sometimes it's unavoidable to place large pieces of furniture like the dresser next to the doorway, but honestly try and avoid this too. Basically you want the entrance to every room to feel as open and non-claustrophobic as possible. From the primary bedroom, you can move directly into that bathroom and say that bathrooms are the only room in the house where clean glass truly matters. I'm not talking about the window glass like earlier, I'm talking specifically about glass shower scum and toothpaste splatter on mirrors. You want those mirrors to be 110% spot and streak free because you will be able to see them in the final imagery and it reflects the rest of the room. Just like before when I talked about the primary bedroom, all the things I'm telling you about this primary bathroom will also apply to the other bathrooms in the house. I'll reiterate, no Kleenex boxes, but you'll also want to remove most of your personal items like toothbrushes, shower items like body washes and loofahs. If you have nice tile, I would also recommend removing all the rugs in there because it'll make the space feel larger and show off the nice tile that comes with the house. You can leave a nice soap and hand towel or real towels that are new and freshly pressed, but if it's been used already, it has to go. You do not have a separate stand-up shower and have a tiled shower with a curtain, I advise pulling that shower curtain to one side. And the side will be that provided to the most natural shadows and that will obviously be the opposite side of the window. So if the window is on the left side of the bathroom, pull the shower curtain all the way to the right. If your shower's not tired at all and you have an insert, I recommend just keeping that curtain closed and make sure that curtain is pressed and not wrinkly. You don't want them wishing there was tile in that shower if it's not there. Generally speaking, the only closet that gets images taken would be the primary, but if you have lots of big, nice closets like our typical and larger homes, then feel free to tidy those up and show them off. But if you're running out of space and need a place to hide stuff, feel free to take over those spaces with as much of your stuff as you can cram inside and shut the door. It's also important to make sure that all the light bulbs in your house work. If you wanna go the extra mile, make sure they all match and go even further, preferably they'd all be daylight temperature because it will make your house feel cleaner and sharper in the final images. 
if they don't have to remove the color contamination of multiple bulbs in a single room, especially kitchens and bathrooms, that daylight temperature goes a long way. The only space left to cover is the exterior. And here we're gonna be a few things that you definitely do not wanna hear. Number one, yes, the entire outside environment will be captured, every square inch. So there's no hiding anything unless it's tucked inside of a shed. It will be seen under the deck. It will be seen hidden behind the bushes or stored against the side of the house. If it's outside, it will be seen. And no, you cannot move them front to back because 360 tours and aerials will capture the entire property from the top down. So there's nowhere to hide. This also includes all of your neighbor's properties and your cars. I realize you cannot do much about how the neighbors live, but you can be proactive by letting them know in advance that a visual creator is coming. And try not to schedule these services on trash run days because every house on the street will have their cans out. Another huge thing is outside service vendors. I don't care if we're talking about carpet cleaners, lawn maintenance, or just actual house cleaners. All, all of these services need to be scheduled the day before and never the day of your shoot. All of these service providers are notoriously late showing up and leaving. And the last thing you want in your images are these providers there. You don't want a cleaning car with brooms and mops all over the place. You don't want their van with a huge carpet cleaning hose running into the house. And you don't want fresh cut grass all over the place. You want all of those services done the day before. So the morning of your shoot, you can go around and button up the property. Not clean it, button it up. When it comes to the day of your visual services, you wanna think about this as your very first property showing. You want your property to look exactly like it will on days you're not there to clean it and move things. You wanna have a clean and prepared property with very few things to do the day of, because this extra time will allow you to catch things you never could have caught before. If you're running around like a chicken with its head caught off trying to do everything, you're bound to miss at least one thing. But you take your time and prepare in advance you now have that time to slowly walk around your property and really pay attention to the things that might stick out. You might notice the tag of the rug sticking out in the bathroom or the tote under your bed making the skirt stick out a little weird. Setting yourself up for success in advance, now this allows you to see the toothpaste spider in the children's bathroom mirror before it's too late. It all comes down to proper preparation. And if you follow these simple staging guidelines and timeline, I know you're giving yourself the best possible opportunity for that higher sale price. As always, keep rocking and rolling, enjoy what you're doing, make smart business decisions, and let me know in the comments down below which, if any of these tips, was the most helpful for your stage. Like and subscribe if you like my style, and I'll catch you next time. <laughs> Nothing extra this time. Check out the next two videos in the series because I'm walking through Kula and I'm going to bring you through the whole process easy and hard. Peace.